You know, Rich, the other issue is um, the setup into this week's earnings. It comes at a time where the Nasdaq's at a new high. Can Accord saying that sets a new bar. Uh, the bar is high as a result of the Nasdaq. Wells today talks about a, quote, complicated <coughs> setup uh, that many popular longs are already pricing in positive scenarios. Um, how should we think about all of that going into this week in general? The fact that, look, these stocks were a little sleepy for a while. Now they've woken up and stood tall. Well, we have strong macro factors with uh, resilient growth, strong unemployment, Fed easing, declining inflation. Earnings are setting up very well so far. But that's against a backdrop where stocks have run ahead of earnings. So in the last five years, uh, earnings are up 53 percent, but stocks are up over 80 percent. And this is emblematic of the tech sector, where tech is now 31 percent of the S&P and only 24 percent of the earnings of S&P. So it's stretching the multiple on the market. And now we're hanging on to every single quarter with whether they're going to make earnings. I look at it in a way where these are long-term holds. And investors, if they're, most investors that I encounter are underweight technology because of, they cite, it's too much of the S&P, the multiples are too high, we should buy cheaper stocks like the S&P uh, 600 or the 2000. In, for the last few years, it's been very important to hold these stocks through these earnings periods and continue to hold them long term. That's what we're doing. Well, why? Because the earnings growth expectations are so far and above what the expectations are for the 493 or the equal weight or what have you. Because, for example, I think these are these are pretty good numbers. Earnings growth in Q3 expectations, tech 15.2. Com services, 13.5. S&P outside of those, down 0.2. Yeah, there you go. A donut, right. goose egg. Right. That's why you're willing to pay up for these stocks. Exactly. And that's, that's why it's important to continue to hold these names. Most investors are underweight large cap tech. And it's very important to have a presence in these stocks for the long term. You see the cash flows. Microsoft's cash, cash flow over the last five years has gone from $55 billion to $118 billion. I think Bryn's spot on when she talks about spending like a drunken sailor. We don't know if spending $45 billion a year in CapEx is going to pay off. That's the big uncertainty over the long term. 